Okay. Praise God. So tonight, we're, we're going to be talking about fasting. Praise God. Uh, uh, it very, very ironic. I always like to talk and teach on fasting at the first of the year. <clears throat> and when I was home, I had a pastor on Wednesday night. He talked about it. I thought, well, this is pretty good. And we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to deal with this. And, so, uh, and, and again, I'm not saying anything negative about him. He's a great friend of mine, okay? Great friend. I esteem him highly. But he, he made a comment. He said, he said we're going to start off January fasting and praying. He said, I'm not asking the Sunday morning crowd because they're not saved enough to do it. He said, uh, he said I'm not going to ask the, win the Sunday night crowd because they're just now growing up. He said, but I'm going to ask my Wednesday night crowd. I'm going, oh, Jesus, you're bearing yourself. Calm down, Tony, calm down. He said, we're going to fast for 30 days. And he said, he said I'm going to ask you, uh, he said, I'm going to open up the church every night for, at 6 o'clock, and I'm asking all of y'all to come up here. He said, no matter what happens, and I'm telling the story, and then we're going to read the verses in just a minute. He said, no matter what happens, I'm going to be here at 6 o'clock. If I'm the only person here, I'm going to be here. Y'all ready for the shoot and drop now, aren't you? <laughs> Monday night he was sick. Tuesday night he was sick. So he hadn't made a, he hadn't made a time yet. He's had somebody else open up. Now, guess what? Now, what, listen to me. This is really a teachable moment here. Almost everybody in the church is now because they're calling in sick. Okay? Now, look. Here, here's, here's the thing about fasting for all of us. I wrote down right here at the top. I want us to look at that. Fasting, part of fasting is the depriving of our desires, come on, to draw closer to God. I can tell you when uh, the times I've fasted for extended periods of time, I said Sunday, my, my longest time I, I personally fasted was 14 days. I'm going to tell you after one day, I felt like I was going to chew my finger off. I've had people tell me, he said, Brother Hal, when you're really in a spiritual fast, you don't get hungry. I said, well, I've never been in a spiritual fast because though my spirit is trying to come alive, my flesh will always continue to try to make me die. Okay? Okay? And, and God, we're going to look and we're going to see how that God gives extra privileges to those who, who are consistent about prayer and fasting. We think that it's just something that's talked about in a couple little areas, but Jesus practiced praying. He also practiced fasting because, watch this, if I can crucify my flesh, what happens? My spirit can, can grow up. John Baptist was basically saying it when he said, I must decrease so you can increase in me. Praise God. Have, have you ever tried to pour... Uh, Coke in a full bottle of water. You get just a little bit out, and then it starts running on the ground because what's already in there has already taken up a certain amount of space. And you're not going to get that new beverage in until you take the old out. Okay? Praise God. Now, now in, in, in Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 36 through 38, I, I, I put those passages down there. There was a lady by the name of Anna. She was 84 years old, and it said that she served. Oh, I got a, they got me a nice, look here. Praise God. And she had lived with her husband. Uh, he had been for seven years from her, her, her virginity. Go, go to the next verse and watch this. And she was a widow about 84, and she didn't leave the temple. She stayed in the house of God, and, and watch this. This was her mi oh, Don't let me hit you, brother. Praise God. I'll, I'll shorten it up a little bit. Praise God. But she served God. Notice that is a ministry. She served God with fastings and prayers day and night. 
I had a lady in our church when I was just understanding about God. I, I didn't know what fasting was. I'll be honest, I didn't even know nothing about fasting. And I'd started working with the young people. I didn't know what fasting was. And, but I moved into the, church, into the house next door to the church. And I was renting it there. And one Friday afternoon, she knocked on the door. And I opened the door and I said, hey, sister. I said, how you doing? Come on in. I said, Teresa. And I, I told her who was here. And she said, no, I can't come in. She says, as unto the Lord. Watch this. We're going we're gonna to study about this in Isaiah 58. And so said, as unto the Lord. And she handed me two T-bone steaks, two big baked potatoes, they were wrapped in oil. They weren't cooked. And I said, what is this? She says, as unto the Lord. And she turned around and she walked off. And I said, Teresa, look what she give us. Teresa said, well, why'd she do it? I says, I don't know. So I went and asked Brother Mar later. I said, Brother Mar, I told her what, what, what happened. And she said, well, she's been in Isaiah 58. And, and, and part of her ministry... She comes up to the church. He told me the day she comes up there. Well, naturally, guess, guess what I did? I live next door to the church. Guess who I was looking for those days? I was going to see if she really did it very long. You know, you know some people decide they're going to do something for God mislead you, and they do it twice, and they, don't get the, and they don't get the expected response that they're looking for, so they quit. But she just kept going. And, they, and, and, he said, and he said, for several years now, get this, several years now, she made a vow to God that she was going to fast every Friday. And she said she makes her husband fast too. He don't go to church. She's a strong lady. <laughs> Waterburger probably gets a little business from him. Well, anyway, praise God. But, but for several years, she had, so what she did, every Friday, she bought her favorite meal, a T-bone steak and a baked potato. And, what, and, what's this, and she dealt her bread unto the hungry. Wow. Let's go back. Let's go back. So, so over, over here in Luke chapter, tw 20, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 20, 36 to 38, she, was, she had been serving God for, for years. She stayed in the church. People, that's how people knew her, okay? That's how people knew her. And while she is there, they are having the, dedica the dedication service of who? Jesus Christ himself. She's 84, and God, watch this. When you, when you draw close to God, James chapter 4, verse 8 says, when you draw close to God, God draws close to you. The King James X says, draw nigh unto God, and God will draw nigh unto you. And so watch this. God, we're going to see where, where fasting as well as praying, and there's a combination that works together. Anybody ever used J.B. Weld before? You ever, you ever only had one tube of the J.B. Weld? You spray it on. You, uh, listen to me, Freddie. It's pretty good stuff. You can spray it on, and it don't get hard. It's a miracle. It, but it doesn't work. Either tube won't work without the other. I'm not saying prayer don't work without fasting. But, but anyway, you know, while, while she was a God, God caused a, a coincidence to happen. That's how we see it on this side. But God is manipulating and moving things around. And he said, he said Anna, you're 84. At, eight, at the age of 84, a lot of people would stay home because their bodies hurt. They hurt. But, but, but I'm, going to, I'm going to bless you. And before you pass away, you're going to see Jesus Christ, the Messiah in the flesh. Man, that's a pretty, that is a, a pretty powerful thing now now we read over here in mark chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 also it it, it talks about uh can you well anyway oh uh, uh, that that it, it says in mark 20, 29 it says that that some of these d demonic possessions don't come out by anything else except but by prayer and by fasting okay so there is a new there is an authority given to the believer when they give themselves to God. Okay? 
Jesus said to his disciples, he says, I have more things to tell you. I've got, I've, I've got more insights I want you to know about. But he said, but you're not ready to handle them yet. You ever, you ever seen somebody in charge at work, but, but they're not really leadership material? They'll tear, brother, they will, they will tear everything up. Praise God. Somebody will have to go behind them. Praise God. And watch this. If it is the boss's son, hello, hello. I was visiting with another pastor friend. This isn't going on the Internet, is it? Praise God. Anyway, I was with, with another pastor friend of mine, and, and, and he, he's got a beautiful church. Everything's good and everything. And uh, he's a tremendous musician. He, he knows technology well. He, he's a decent singer. I mean, he's, he's, he's really got it all together. But he had his wife in a position she's not supposed to be in. She's leading praise and worship, but she can't sing. She's the lead pianist, but she can only chord, and it can only be in one key. You understand that, don't you? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, but, and I asked, and he said, he said, Pastor, give me, he said, help me, give me advice. I said, fire your wife. He said, I can't. I said, okay. I said, your church won't grow until you do because she's not in her, her right position. This is what I told him a year and a half before I came. I was, I was working with him, helping him at that time. Praise God. When I come down this path, he said, he said, Pastor, he said, he said, give me some advice. I said, I, I'll give you all the advice you need. Last time. And he, he, he said, well, I want you to know, I realize now my wife wasn't in her right position. Come on, church. And he said, Anyway, it's in the right now. So, so, so watch this. During the fasting and, 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 and praying situation, remember how, the, how the, the disciples of Jesus came and, and said, Jesus, watch this, watch what he said. He said, teach us to pray like we taught, like John taught his disciples to pray. Now, now why would they ask that? Was it because they had watched John do some teaching? No, it was because that they had seen John's disciples out there praying with other people, doing other things. Watch this. And they were seeing things happen. Now watch, now watch. There, there, there was some people that one day that came up and asked Jesus, says, Jesus, how come John and his disciples do what often? Anybody know? Fast often. And he said, you and your disciples, y'all don't fast much. Oh, well, Jesus didn't fast. I'm not fasting. Nobody said Jesus didn't fast. He got up early in the mornings, and he was out in the desert. He was out there praying. But now watch. He said, uh, and, and, and so because John taught his disciples to fast and to pray, and there was an authority in their life, okay? And you say, well, why didn't Jesus teach his to pray? He, he, he said, because I'm with them. He said, watch, watch what he said, finish it up. Anybody know? He said, as soon as I'm gone, they're going to learn how to fast and they're going to learn how to pray. Praise God, okay? Praise God. So, so let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's go to uh, in Exodus. Okay. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. Matthew 6 and 33. 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2, and then 4 through 6. Isaiah 58, 1 through 4. Isaiah 58, verse 6 and 7. Then you're going to do 8. You're going to do 9. You're going to do verse 10. Freddie, verse 11. Verse 12. You're going to do verse 13. And then, David, you'll go back and do verse 14. Praise God. Okay. So, here, here we go. Fasting, again, let me say it. Now, this is my, my belief in that, is that. It says, fasting is the depriving of one's desires to draw closer to God. Okay? You, I want to tell you this. I know I heard, I used to go to this hole in this church, and they, and, and they taught that, that when you really had a, a good fast, you didn't get hungry. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to get hungry. 
okay? You're going to get hungry, and you're going to find every excuse why you shouldn't fast, okay? Praise God. Okay, let's move us honest right us now. Okay, Ecclesiastes chapter... Uh, okay, no, 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 excuse me. Exodus chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20, verse 5 and 6. Now, this is one of the Ten Commandments. Go ahead. Honor the Lord your God and are jealous for him, visiting the iniquity of the fathers of the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate him. Verse 6. But showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. Okay. This is the, this is the second of the Ten Commandments, okay? Now, I'm, I want to show you here that that one of God's commandments was the fast. Go back to verse 5, okay? He, he tells them, don't bow down yourself to them. Don't serve them because God is what? He's, he's a jealous God. Why? He wants to be first in our life, okay? All right, okay. And, he, and, and so... We'll leave that alone there. Okay, so, so, so now go to Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things be added. And we're going to put that, to, put, put that to, together with first John chapter 2, verse 16. The verse you read, Matthew 6, what did it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Oh, sometimes we say seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things. No, his righteousness, his standard of right, what he determines is righteous. Now watch this. Now watch this. Go back to the next verse, 1 John 2. He says, he says, he says this is what the world has for us, the lust of the flesh. What's the first thing that happens when you start uh, fasting? Huh? You get hungry. If my wife knew I was fasting, that was the day that she made those moon pie-sized chocolate chip cookies. You know, and I said, babe, what are you doing? I, you know I'm fasting. She said, I didn't know. <laughs> my flesh was raging. How many people have started a fast with God, and then as soon as they got hungry, what happens? You eat. Why? And you say, it was too hard. But you know what he says in Hebrews? He said, you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving uh, uh, against sin. We give up too easy. Now, now watch this. And the lust of the eyes. Wow, honey, look at this. Man, man, uh, I remember when ponchos, y'all remember when ponchos used to be around? Praise God. You know, and, and, and so when, when I was young, we were poor, but I could get all I wanted to eat. I didn't care how good it was. I just wanted a lot of it. Okay. You, you know what I'm talking about, guys? Praise God. And so, it, and so I'd see a commercial about ponchos. I wanted ponchos. I'd lick that TV screen if I had to. Praise God. Because if I saw it, I wanted it. Okay, these are things that when you get saved, God wants to break. Because, because watch this, until we can break the pride of self, of what we want more than what God wants. And watch this, and he says, then the pride of life. None of that is of the Father, but all of that is of the world, okay? Now, and you're thinking, well, Brother Hay, you had not really proven nothing yet. Okay, so now we're going to take it all together and we're going to the book of Ecclesiastes. Now, look, David wrote Psalms. He wrote, you know, he wrote some of the Proverbs, but, but, but Solomon wrote most of the Proverbs, and then he got off into Ecclesiastes, and we won't even deal with that. But watch this. In, in chapter 5, verse 2. Let's stop right there a second. Okay. 
We know what rash means. It doesn't mean you're broken out and you need to put a little ointment on. But don't make any promises too quickly. I was sitting there on Wednesday night and he was saying, I'll be there every day. He said, nothing can stop me. And I said, oh, Jesus, you're burying yourself, buddy. Praise God because I know you're going to make the first three weeks easy. But when everybody else quits showing up, pray, there's still going to be that grandma that's going to drive by just to see if you're still there because she wants to tear you down. God wants to lift you up. So you shouldn't be saying that. Listen to me. We, all of us, if we're not careful, we, we, we put ourselves in a corner sometimes with what we say. Okay, now watch this. He says, let your words be few. Go ahead, sister. Verse 4. Keep going. Oh, listen to it. Listen, go back to verse 4. I know, I, I know you got an, another verse. He said, when you do make a vow to God, don't not pay it. God says you're a fool, and he has no pleasure in that type of attitude. That's, and if you, if you know Scripture, he didn't use the word fool lightly. Hello. Okay. He said, he said but... But pay what you said you're going to do. Okay, uh, keep going. Let them not keep vows, lest the vows be not Listen to me. What, he, what Ecclesiastes is, is saying, he's saying that, that when you tell God you're going to do something, if you don't do it, it's a sin. Are you, are, are you with me? And so, and so here, is, here is the, well, okay, I won't ever promise God anything. <laughs> Hello. But, but we done looked, we done looked. Remember Anna the prophetess? She's coming in there, and she made up her mind. I'm coming in, and my ministry is to fast and to pray before God. I'm denying my flesh. I'm going to break my flesh because I believe there's a reward in giving myself to God. Okay? And what was his reward? She got to see the Christ child. Could you, Miss... Miss uh, it's neither. Let me ask you a question. If, 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 I'm not going to take you back there, but I'm going to say you're here and you had something you was really praying, for, praying about and you felt like it's something real serious, real, real, really a big deal to you. And God says, if you're faithful to doing this, I'm going to do it. But plus, I'm going to have my son Jesus appear in your house and have a conversation with you. Whew. I'm telling you. Now look, your husband doesn't know you've had this thing and you go into a fast. Are you going to miss out on seeing Jesus and seeing this happen for that plate of brownies he brought home for you? Are the brownies going to have very much pull on your life? Listen to me. It's only when we as children of God realize, realize the value of what is possible that we'll give up and we'll put ourselves in discomfort. But now here he says, he, watch this first part. He says, he says, if you make a vow and you don't keep it, you're causing yourself to sin and that causes a reaction from God we're going to suffer the loss of something. That's pretty powerful. That's pretty powerful when you think about that that way. I'm not adding to the words. I'm just telling you what it says. That. Okay. So, so here we go. We're going to get into, into uh, Isaiah. We're, we're going to begin to, to, to read there. Praise God. And so, and so when, when we 
Scripture calls it a sin. When we fail at fasting, when we get hungry, we're telling God, in a way, my stomach is more important than my God. Okay? Now, but I want to take you, fasting, we have reduced it down to just denying our flesh of food. You're going to find in Isaiah 58, it's not all about food. It's about so much more than food, okay? And now, we don't fast for a true fast does not have us fasting so that we can receive, okay? I want you to get this. Our fasting is so that we can break yokes and bondages and bring blessings on other people's lives. Get a hold of that. Lord, I want to fast today because you know my sister, Lord. She never did get me the right Christmas present. Let her have a wreck today, Lord. Hello. That's not what God wants. Lord, Lord, you know, you know that I was in the wrong. And John was not. Lord, will you get him? Would you get him? Would you just, would you just mash him up good? And, and, Lord, because you know I deserve it. God says he doesn't want to hear that. Okay? And I know I'm being a little overboard some of it, but, but I, I want to get it. Okay, Le, uh, let's continue on. Let's go over there to I, Isaiah. Praise God. Okay, you know, our bodies fight denial. You know what the biggest, one of the biggest problems, we're not talking about the word inside the church is? People getting offended. Even when they're in the wrong they don't want to be told they're wrong. None of us, uh, let's be honest, anybody here like being told you're wrong? Uh-uh, we're all that way. But when we deny our flesh, when we, when we deny the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, when we deny that, and because what does God t teach us? He says, he says uh, uh, Miss Sylvia, I, I want you to esteem Peggy better than you are. I want you to treat her with respect that she's better than you are. I want you to esteem. I want you to treat David like he's somebody special. We know he's not. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, David. Pray. No, no, no. L listen to me, though. L l listen to me because, because that hurts us. Amen? That hurts. And, and, and don't all of us really like when we do something? Don't we like to sort of throw our chest back and see what everybody says about it? And if they like it, I've done that. And if, and, if they, and if they don't like it, what happens? We leave and go to the other church because we're waiting to be offended again. I'm a, I'm a believer. I'm a believer it never was God's will for there to be as many churches in a town as what there are today. We have a lot of buildings, but we have very little authority in society. Because we're offended. Wow. Ooh. Okay. Check. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's begin. Let's, let's begin over uh, verses 1 through 4. And I'm, I'm not really going to read them. It, it, uh, uh, that's, that's what I was talking about. People go to God in, in Isaiah 58. People go to God in fasting and prayer, and they want to get even. Okay? With those they feel like have wronged them, but they have no results. Okay? Before, before I take you into Isaiah 58, let me take you back to when God calls Isaiah into the ministry. He said, Isaiah, he says, I'm calling you to be a prophet. He says, okay. He said, but you're not going to a strange country. You're going to be a prophet right here in your own hometown and in your own people. He says, okay. He says, but, but now listen. The people I'm sending you to are stiff-necked, hard-headed. Let's just say hard-headed. Okay? They don't want to listen to nobody. But, but now watch. The reason that God wants, wants, wants us to fast so that we can break self, because watch what he tells him. He says, he says Isaiah, he says, I'm not telling you that you're going to be successful. You ever done the right thing and it turned out bad? And then you go, huh, Don thinks that about me. 
you wait till mine. I'm, I'm going to trip him next time he comes by. Because, because if I do something good for Don and Don doesn't appreciate me, I'm, I'm through with him. Hello? I know nobody here is that way, but I'm just saying, you know, praise God. I'll tell you what, if he said it to me, I'd have, slapped, I'd have slapped the spit out of the mouth. I'm telling you right now, in Jesus' name, I'd have busted him. <laughs> Hello? But you know what? He says, God says, he says, Isaiah, I'm not even telling you that those people are going to listen to you. I'm not even telling you that they're going to change. I'm not telling you they're going to get saved. Boy, isn't, isn't that a way to get, okay. So we want you to play the piano tonight. We don't like the way you play the piano. We, we want you to sing even though we would have, I'd rather have a squealing cat in here than you. <laughs> okay, but, but will you do it for us tonight? You're not going to want to sing, are you? You're not going to want to play, are you? Praise God. I mean, that's how to influence and get friends. Praise God. But, but no, this is what he said. But watch what he said. He said, he said, but, he said, all of Israel will know there's been a prophet among them. Let's break it down into East Texas. Miss Susan, if you do the right thing and Miss Nita, Miss Aura, bad mouths you about it. God says, you've been in my presence. I've been breaking you so I can, there can be more of me in you. And look, she may never like you. She may never want to be your friend, but they'll know that you knew God. And they'll know that you hold a higher standard. Wow. Oh, don't you like that scripture, do unto others as they do unto you? Don't you like that? You like that scripture? You like, <laughs> I bet you do, big boy. That ain't what it says. But anyway, praise God. He says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Praise God. Okay, so, so watch this. Okay, all right. So, so we're, we're going all the way down to, uh, did I have somebody read verses 1 through 4? I did. Okay. Uh, read it. Go ahead and read it. Yeah. Okay, okay, so listen, they're asking God, they're saying, we've been doing all this and you hadn't done nothing. Now God answers them and, and he says, he said, he said, because in the day you're supposed to be fasting, you're doing it, your lifestyle hadn't changed at all. Probably the biggest misconception about fasting and prayer. Uh, we'll drive down the road, we're drinking a Coke, we're talking on the phone. Jesus, Jesus, oh, yeah, how you doing, sister? Yeah, okay, yeah, let's go out tonight. Let's do this. Come on. And, and I'm listening to the radio, and I call, that, I, call, I call that praying. That's not praying. Hello? That's not praying. That's not getting intimate and alone with, with the Lord. Okay? Praise God. And he, said, he says, in, in your day, you find all your pleasure... And you exact all your labors. Man, I was driving by. I'm telling myself today, I was driving by. And all of a sudden, I could just see that big-headed, white-headed white guy, you know, that's got the cone up there, and he makes some good hamburgers, you know. Praise God. And I wanted the sourdough jack, and, and it had them two tacos. I could just see them. And I tell you what, I, I, I pulled in. And I caught myself, and I never hit my brake. I just made a U-turn in there, and I just went on out. <sighs> Praise God. Listen to, li listen to me. In the day that we're giving ourselves to God, we've got to deny our other things. Praise God. Okay, so keep, uh, keep going. Wow. 
So now we talked about that earlier, how that he, he, he said when they're fasting, they want to get even. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you ever prayed a prayer like that, you know. Bless God, Lord, kill them. Praise God, just kill them. Praise God, Lord, Lord. You know, it was a hit and run, and they hit me and they run, Lord. I tell you what, let them run off the, into the river. Let them just run off into the river. Praise God. Yeah, that's what they need. God says, I'm not going to answer that, okay? That's not, that's not, that's not what we go to God for. But, but no, watch, here's what we do. Verse 6 and 7. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the hands of wickedness? To undo the heavy burdens? To let the oppressed go free? And as to let them look? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him? And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Wow, watch that. None of that is really has anything to do with food, does it? He said, he said, he said, watch this. He said, he said, you're going to let the bands of wickedness go. You're, you're going to help people get out from under heavy, heavy burdens. You're going to try to break their yoke. You're going to, you you know, you're going to give your bread unto the hungry. It's talking about sacrifice. And it's talking, watch this. But how do you know what to fast for? In the middle of your prayer time, when you set it aside for God, God says that when you seek him with all of your heart, what happens? You will find him. Wow. Praise God. Okay. Verse 8. Okay. Now watch this. Remember the lady I told you about? She'd come up to my house and she'd give me them. She did that for years because she stood on that scripture. I can't remember what you call that, but you know how when you have your glasses on and your eyes look like they're sort of bulging out? It's, a, it's some type of, okay? She, she had that. She had that. I'll come, yeah, okay, praise God. And so she had that, and her husband was sick too. And she fasted, and she gave, and she gave, because she realized verse 8 was God's promise to her. And it says, Your righteousness shall go before for thee, and the glory of the Lord shall follow you. Listen to me. When you begin to live that way, God's favor and God's blessing comes on you. Things begin to happen for you, okay? He said that your health would spring forth speed. See, sometimes we get it backwards. We get it backwards. We fast and we pray when we have a need. Oh, it, it's totally different. Jesus was the king of kings. But what he did, he came, and what did he do? He fed, he ministered to, he let the oppressed go free. When John Baptist is in prison, what does he do? You remember what he did? He said, he, he, he sent his disciples, he said, go and ask Jesus, do we look for him or do we seek for another? Okay? And when he got there, Jesus didn't really answer him. He didn't say yes or no. He said, you go tell John. What did he tell John? The hungry are getting fed. The blind are starting to see. Why? Because watch this. God says that when you do that, your health's going to spring forth speedily. God's, God's presence will go before you, and God's glory shall be your reward. You are blessed. Uh, when you begin to fast and give yourself uh, to God, God blesses you in a, in a mighty way. It is, if you want favor, instead of praying for favor, what did King Solomon do? He takes over the kingdom. It's a massive kingdom, wealthy kingdom. And, and God says, I'll do whatever you want me to do. You just, you just name it. 
Did he ask for money? Did he ask for long lives? Did he ask for more wives? Oh, God, if God would have given him any more, I don't know. Praise God. But what he said, he said, but give me wisdom so I can judge his people. And what did God say? Because you didn't last for long lives, because you didn't ask for health, and because you didn't ask for wealth, guess what I'll do? I'm going to give you all of that. Because, because see, instead of looking Looking for something to bless me, we're looking for something to bless the kingdom of God. And that's really what it's all about. That's what, that's what fasting is all about. God wants to break us so that we can come into a closer relationship with him. Verse 9. Okay, watch this. Look. Now, this still goes, this still goes when you're breaking all the yokes and you're helping other people. Your light's going to spring forth. Your health is going to spring forth. And then he says, watch this. Then he'll call and the Lord will answer. Let me say this nicely. There is a group of, in, of Christian individuals. How do I say no? I better leave that alone, I think. Well, anyway, they say, I'm not going to leave it alone, they say that the days of miracles are over. Okay? They say the days of miracles are over. So I was raised in that denomination young at young ages. Okay? You know what they're, you know, you know where they rank of all the major denominations in missions and giving? Dead last. Why? Because watch this. When you begin to give and, and bless and put other people first, he says, then you'll call and the Lord will answer. And you won't be saying that the days of miracles are over, that God doesn't speak to his people today. Okay? Because he said that when you start blessing others, when you call, God will say, here I am. And then he, it's conditional. Almost all of the promises of God have a condition to them. Okay? He says... If, I'll do all this, if, if you take away from the midst of thee the yoke, you, you quit putting people under burdens and bondages. Hello. You know, I had a, had, had a good friend. She comes, she said, oh, Brother Howell, listen to this message. You're going to love this message. And the guy was, he, he was, he was preaching on sin. He was preaching on hell. And he was preaching on, on LGBTQ or however you say that. And all these different, all these different things. And, and she said, said, that was a good message, wasn't it? I said, I, I said, I hate it. She said, why? I said, look, you remember when you had your sister come into the church? She come in. She lived in Little Rock and she got her to come in. It had been months. Listen to me now. I'm, I'm, I'm not against preaching on sin. But being hard is not holy. What did Jesus do? He looked, at, he looked at that woman that was caught in adultery. What did he do? They wanted to stone him. He wanted to give her another chance. He had hope in what she could be. All they knew was what she used to be. Okay? And, he, and she said, why? And I, I, said, I said, you remember when you brought your sister in? She said, yeah. I said, you remember that day that we had this evangelist and I named his name? And she said, oh, yeah, I don't like him. I said, why? Well, my sister was there. It was the first time she was there. And he, and he kept talking about things that, that it was just like he was talking about her. I said, okay, now look, your sister wasn't there. So you wanted to get hard on everybody. It's the love of God that draws men to repentance. Not that we don't preach on sin. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that. We bring up sin. But, but listen to me. I don't believe that we should ever have a, a message where we preach them into hell without giving them a hope for eternity. Any, any, time, any time that you, I tell you what, any time that you, uh, you're a deer hunter, any time that you kill a deer, you know what you do? As soon as you can, you get him skin out, you get him quartered up, and you get him on ice. Why? Because, because if all you do is skin him and leave him out there, flies are going to get on it, worms are going to get on it, and that meat's going to run. So as soon as you skin it, you've got to do something with it to preserve it. 
Praise God. So he said, he, he said, you'll call and I'll answer if you'll quit putting yokes and too heavy burdens on people. The putting forth of the finger, pointing at people. I'll tell you what. And they speak. If you think you're something in the kingdom of God, you're nothing. If you have to tell everybody how good you are and how holy you are, it's because deep down you're not sure if you're as holy as what you think you are and you've got to prove your point. Mm. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm gone. I'm tell. Praise God. Verse 10. Watch this, watch this verse 10. I, I hated in English class when we used to diagram sentences. Anybody remember all that? Man, I used to think, ah, I don't want to do that. But now watch this. He says, watch this. Here's, here's Miss Susan, if, if, if you do this and you do this, then, then this is what I'm going to do for you. Your light's going to rise and the, and, and your darkness will be as noonday. So, so, so watch, I like this. He said, he said if, if, if you will help people that are in need and you will help those that are going through affliction, God, God, says, God says, all of a sudden there's going to be a, I'm gonna, I am going to magnify you. I'm going to illuminate your life. And even the, anybody ever gone through a dark time? Okay. When you go... He said, and even your dark times that you'll face in the future will be like your noondays now when the sun is shining. So God, God, God's blessing is on, watch this, God's greatest blessings happen to us as he breaks our will. He reveals, he reveals himself to us the more that we break ourselves. That make any sense there? Okay, thank you. Holy. Keep moving. What verse are we on? Ten? Okay, let's, let's go. Uh, I'm going to speed it up. Uh, let's go. Uh, verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually, giving you water when you are dry, and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a fresh flowing spring. In other words, this is all, if, if you go back to verse, verse 11. Verse 10, if you draw your soul out to the hunger and satisfy those that, that are living in, in, in some type of affliction, verse 11, the Lord will guide you, satisfy you, even when everybody else is going through a drought, and he'll make fat your bones. I mean, he'll bless you. That doesn't mean you're going to gain weight. Praise God. He said, he said, he said but you'll be like a water garden. There had been a huge recession and I remember we decided I felt, I felt I heard the voice of God and we went into a huge remodel I think it was a little over a million and a half that we had to borrow plus we were putting another million and a quarter with it and everybody all of the churches were cutting back but I felt like I heard the voice of God Texcana Gazette comes out there with with a reporter and a photographer and they said, we want to take a picture of what you're doing, and we want to have a, uh, a uh, we want you to tell us why you're doing this. Praise God. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. Don't worry. I thought I was getting somebody was excited. But anyway, so, so, so I tell them my story. I said, God told me, and I told them what God said. I said, I was praying one night, and God said it. He wrote it all down. You know what that sucker did? That guy did? That great guy did? That lollipop did? <laughs> Praise God. He went to every pastor in town just about and asked him what they thought. And one of my best friends, he said, he said, well, I know Br Brother Howe. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a faith. He, he always talks and walks faith. He said, we're going to find out if, if he really heard from God or not because right now we're cutting back. I went, oh, geez, I read the whole paper. And 
Man, so, some of my deacons got, got scared after they read what I said to the paper and then what the other preacher said to the paper. Praise God. But I tell you what, we had a 15-year note. We never took up a special offering. I never mentioned it. I said God would provide. I always just take up one offering. Praise God. And we'd never say if we were doing good or doing bad. You'd have to find out at the end, end of, the, of the year and God was going to take care of it or he wasn't God. And I said if God doesn't take care of it, I'm a false prophet. Get rid of me. If And, and, and if we have to start doing all these building things it, it wasn't what God told me we had a 15 year note of $11,800 a month praise God Ho Chi Minh Trail can I tell you we paid it off in seven and a half years never took a spec and, and had more money in the bank when we when we well, when it was over than what we started with. Can I tell you, God is faithful, but we got we to gotta hear his voice. Okay, and, and during that time, this is what got, got my deacons. I said, guys, if we can pay 11 5 a month, we need, to, we need to up our missions giving. We can't, they said. I said, we're going to. We were giving about 60000 a year to missions. God blessed us the very first year. We gave $135,000 to missions. And every year after that gave over $100,000. We, we, we doubled what we were given. Why? Because watch this. God, when, when God breaks us and we can hear his voice, okay? There's a lot of difference in hearing the voice of God and thinking it, it's the right thing to do, okay? Praise God. Let me just skip to that if, if we could. You know the story over here. I've got it here on the on on the back, where where uh, in Second Samuel chapter seven. Watch this. David comes up to Nathan and he says, Nathan, he said, I got a deal. He said, What? He said, I'm living in a big old house now. The kingdom's doing good, and he said, I want to build the temple. Nathan said, Well, you go do everything that's in your heart, because God's with you. That's what he told him. And that night, Nathan goes home and he, he's in, I'm going to say he's got his pajamas on. But he's there and God speaks to him. He said, Nathan, I don't want David to build the temple. My, his son is going to build the temple. He's not going to build the temple. So what's this? It sounded good what David wanted. And David, and so Nathan even agreed with the prophet. He, he agreed with him. That's why the scripture in New Testament says, be careful for nothing. You know, don't take anything for granted. But everything by what? Prayer and supplication. Let your request be made known. God. I am a believer. I, he says, yeah, go do everything that's in your heart. But when he gets there, he, goes, he says, you go back and you tell David, he's not building that temple. And it's hard to go back when the king's popular and say, David, you can't do it because you've been a man of war and you've killed a lot of people and God doesn't want you to do it. Uh, but we do need you to fund our ministry fund over here at the priest. He went, oh, you're cut off. We're taking your head off. No, he didn't say that. But what he did tell him, he said, okay. And he said, but your son is going to build it. Now, if you read that story... It says that when, when King Solomon was, was king, that they, that they piled silver up in the corners, and it was like dust, and it was just like rocks, and they didn't even count it. And everybody, if you're a casual reader of the Word of God, you think that Solomon did all that. Solomon didn't do none of it. His daddy did all of it. His daddy went out back and found a place and he said, I want algum trees, I want cedar trees, and I want this type of trees, and I want them piled up. Praise God. Because, listen, he had, David had heard the voice of God. David knew he would never really see it, but he had heard the voice of God. And so he prepared, and so watch this, he prepared, and Solomon had all this stuff. Why? Because the generation before him prepared it. This isn't really part of the message, but, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll tell you, when we begin to fast and pray, God begins to open the windows of heaven. I mean, I'd like to go through, through the rest of it. I don't know if I'll go three more weeks, but anyway. But, but God begins to speak to us. You know, and... I've told the story how that 
Cincinnati was playing uh, San Francisco in the Super Bowl years ago, and we had church, and so some of them wanted to go have a party afterwards, and, and they had take, delayed the game. Well, hey, on the way home, I accidentally turned the radio on, and they were just awarding who won the Super Bowl, and they told me the score. I went over there. I didn't tell nobody. But I kept telling them, I said, listen, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I know Cincinnati, they got that big, his name was Iggy Woods. And I said, oh, Iggy Woods, I said, he's a big boy. He's going to run up the middle, run up the middle. But I'm going to tell you something, San Francisco's got a lot of heart. They'll stop him on the goal line when it matters because I'll tell you, that's how they are. How would I know that? I'd had a word. <laughs> that's the Super Bowl that, that on two plays in a row from the two-yard line, they run Iggy Woods right up the middle. And guess what happened? Icky didn't get in. But listen to me. The church today, whew, the church today doesn't do a lot of we're going to listen to the voice of God. We, we, we sometimes go by, by what, what we think that we should do. And I believe that's where the church misses it. I believe God still wants to speak to us. Uh I better get away from that. I, I go all night. But, but when we begin to, as individuals, I know what I'm doing for 30 days. Okay? Nobody will ever figure it out probably. But I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm supposed to do. Okay? And I'm telling you that, that when my 30 days are up, I, let me just say this. Fasting's not a one-time event. I'll, I'll take... From time to time, I'll, I'll just take different things out of my life because I feel like they're getting a little bit too much. Okay? First Corinthians, when he's talking about the husband and the wife, and uh, we're adults, but, but anyway, I'm not going to get real intimate on that. But he says, he says, he says, y'all need to be together. He said, except for a time, y'all are to separate. That's where a husband and wife are in agreement. They separate. I don't mean separate and go. Don't say, Brother Hal, says God wants you to separate. But praise God. What he means is, is, is instead, of the, instead of there being intimacy and stuff between them, he says, he says they separate for a time. They're still in the same house, but they give themselves to what? To prayer and to fasting so they can hear the voice of God. I truly believe that some sort of fasting, denying ourselves, is, is something, it may not go on every day of our life, but there's things that we do that we say, I'm not going to listen to this today. Uh, there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's a radio station here, a Christian radio station here in, in town. All this is, is Christian music. But, but, but I, I told the Lord, because I like to get up in the morning, I like to start off and, and get some good song in me, you know. And so I got that bow surround sound radio, and it just feels great to hear. So anyway, praise God. So anyway, I uh, God told me, he said, give me two weeks. Well, I felt he did. So I said, two weeks, no music. So what am I going to do? Oh, I'll sleep late, I guess. No, no. Instead of sitting over there and listening to it, I started getting a Bible, and I started reading more. See, 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 because when you break yourself, people that don't break yourself, David looked over. Can I have two minutes? David looks, David, watch, he's bringing the Ark of the Covenant back in. Y'all remember, he's dancing. Saul's wife, Michael, she, she, she gets on to him, and she, and she says he looked like a lewd fella dancing out there. He said, I'll be, I'll be more lewd than you. He said, he said, me and you will never cross paths again. You'll stay in this end of the castle. I'll be in this end of the castle. I've got other wives. You'll never have another husband. That's basically what he told her. But, but now what? It's right after that. Most theologians think it's within 30 days. He's standing out there at a time when kings go to war. He took somebody's advice and said he should never go out to war. But he's standing there, and he looks over the back, and he sees Bathsheba. Okay? I don't have to go into all that. We know what happened. He goes and gets her. He goes and sends, and they bring to a room. Night's over. Listen to me. If, we, if, if, if we're not about 
breaking ourselves sometime and, and, and telling ourselves we're not going to do this. I, it's not because it's sin. It's because I'm going to give it to God. Listen to me. If you practice that type of lifestyle and on that night that you're looking over the balcony, whether it's Bathsheba or whether it's whatever, it, it could be anything. Because you practice breaking yourself, God says you're going to hear my voice. Because until you learn that what you want is not number one in your life, you'll never know him in the intimate way he wants to be known. Father, I love you so much. Father, I didn't get through half of this, but anyway, I love you. And I thank you for who you are, Father. I want to know you. Father, I love you. And I thank you for who you are. Help us to have a desire for you, the hunger and thirst that you call our heart. Jesus, not our will, but your will be done. Not our will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen.